Now today we're looking at the intake air temperature sensor. This is quite simple to get to, also very simple to test. Let me show you the first technique and then we will remove the sensor and test it on the bench. Now the first technique is seeing what's going on with the sensor using a scan tool. Many of you already own a scan tool. If you do not, a lot of times just visit your local auto parts store and you can use one of their tools. If you want to purchase something like this on your own, this runs for $40 on Amazon. I'll include a link uh, directly to Amazon. If you are a Prime member, you can get something like this typically within a day. If you're not familiar with these, essentially they all have the same end. You just plug this into your vehicle. Again, 1996 and newer vehicles all have the same ends because it's a federal guideline. So let's plug this in. We'll start the car and we'll find where the sensor is located using this scan tool. So on this Acura, on the lower left hand side, so there's the brake pedal, look straight up. You just plug it in here and let's start the vehicle. Now using the scan tool is simple enough. This is not touch screen. You can purchase a touch screen one, but you'll be paying more for something that does the exact same or has the same function. So in this case, we go into the diagnose menu, let it spool up. And very simply, if you have a trouble code for P112, that means that it's reading a very, very high temperature reading, something over 180 degrees Celsius. P113 is below minus 40 degrees Celsius, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. So, okay, here we go. So we want data stream. Make sure you need the data stream on your scan tool. That's the key thing here. Select items. And on the list, you'll see a bunch of different sensors. We need to find the uh, intake air temperature sensor. So let's see, fuel system. As you can see, you can do a lot of stuff with these things. For 40 bucks, it's an absolute must. If you plan on doing your own repair, uh, vehicle speed, we don't care. Here, here you go, intake air temperature sensor. Hit that and let's see what the reading is. So in our case, we have a reading of 44 degrees Celsius. So again, if you see P112, and the reading here is 180 degrees Celsius or more, the sensor's bad, needs to be replaced. If you see P113, and the reading here is minus 40 degrees Celsius or lower, the sensor's bad and needs to be replaced. So it's that easy. Let me show you where it is on the vehicle. We'll go ahead and remove it, and I'll show you another technique on how to test it without a scan tool. Now the intake air temperature sensor lives right underneath this plastic cover. So just grab yourself a flathead screwdriver, and we'll go ahead and remove this from the vehicle. Now with that cover removed, right here is the MAP sensor. We did this uh, just yesterday. And this is the intake air temp sensor. Right here is the coolant sensor, which I think we'll probably do next. But right here, there's a tab. You just press down the tab, pull back on the body. Don't pull from the wires because you can rip something out. And nothing will leak, nothing like that whatsoever. So don't worry about removing this. There's no uh, liquids up here whatsoever. And there's an O-ring in here holding this on. So this is just an adjustable wrench. Make sure you get a good rip on it. Okay. And there we go, just gently. Whoop. And that's it. Now this has not been removed in probably since the car was new 13 years ago. So as you can see it's not hard whatsoever. And there you go. There's your sensor. Now testing this sensor is quite simple. Now the beauty of it is most modern vehicles won't even talk about this technique and rightly so in a sense you bring a vehicle to a repair shop or the dealership they just plug in the scan tool and you know within 30 seconds to a minute it's done and over with but there is a way around it and that is using a digital multimeter this runs for twenty dollars if you don't have one of these i'll include a link to amazon below for this specific one i've used this for some time it's a very very nice multimeter does everything that you ask it to do. Now, as you can see, you have a number of different options and settings on the multimeter. In this case, we want the resistance or the ohm setting. That is this omega symbol. And all that you're doing, as you can see, you have two prongs on the end of the sensor. 
the multimeter has two leads. There's a black lead and a red lead. So all that you're going to do, you're going to take these two leads and just touch these two prongs. Now as you can see it's very tight in here, how would you do it? What I always tend to use, or I should say what I tend to use, are alligator clips. So one on the right. Does not matter if red goes here or on the left, vice versa, doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference whatsoever. Just don't touch the two leads because you won't get a, an accurate reading. Okay, and then right here on the flip side, another alligator clip. So one clip is going to the red lead, the other one to black. We should see a reading here, just so you can see that. Okay, let's say roughly 2.2, between 2.2, 2.3 kilo ohms. There's a little K right there. Now, to test the sensor, we want to apply heat to it. And when heat is applied, this number should go down. So I just have a hair dryer here. Apply a little bit of heat, and this number should go down. Here we go. And there you go. Now if I remove the heat, the number should go back up. May take a few moments. Let's just see if that number goes back up. And there you go. So this is another technique you can do testing the sensor. This works. I've done this on uh, Nissan, Subarus, on this Acura. This is just something you can do as well. Now if you do need to replace the sensor, make sure it does come with a new O-ring. We'll go ahead and reinstall it. And that's it. Now the main thing with these sensors is you don't want to over tighten them because you will certainly strip either the sensor or even worse, the intake here. So just a very, very light snug, okay? That's it. Plug it back in. Now if you do have to uh, erase the code, you can use the scan tool just to erase the code. That's it, you're all set. Thank you for watching. Again, if you do have an Acura TL, I'll include a playlist for a number of repairs that we've already done on the TL and more to come. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.